This Red 3 Games preview is brought to you by Gamefly. All right, so I got back from uh, playing about three hours, the first three hours of Wolfenstein The New Order. Uh, this is obviously reboot, reimagining, reformulation of the very classic franchise that dates all the way back to the Apple uh, systems, Apple computers, what am I saying? And uh, it's probably you know best known for Wolfenstein 3D, which introduced the world to the first person shooter. You return as BJ Blazkowicz, the US Marine who's hardened and hefty and angry and obviously with not much hair on his head. I don't actually identify with him whatsoever. Uh, it takes place in the beginning in 1946. So you're on a plane, suddenly you're, the Germans show up with their planes, but their planes are very sophisticated in the technology. You know, you guys are crashing into the ocean, you're landing on an island that has large mechs and robot dogs. Uh, you're repelling up the side of a big building. It's very clear that somehow the Nazis have appropriated some very sophisticated technology and they have the edge in uh, this war that has clearly gone on further than it did in actual history. Um, some bad things happen. Uh, and then now you're in 1960 in a hospice in Poland, uh, you break out of there and now you realize the Nazis have won the war, they won it a long time ago, and that technology that was so novel in 1946 has gotten only more sophisticated. Um, it's an interesting premise, but the presentation is what probably makes this game more interesting. It's using id Tech 5, and they really are trying to get a lot of narrative into it. Uh, this is not kind of the cartoonish Blaskovitz of uh, Wolfenstein 3D. This is something they're trying to draw more of a character out of it. I mean, it's a very pulpy story, but there's a sense of very serious drama that's underpinning the entire affair. Uh, in terms of gameplay, it's a shooter, but it's a shooter I think they're trying to give a lot of adventure to. As I said, when you're repelling and you're walking up the side of a building, planes are crashing into the water, you have really, really big mechs. Uh, there really was kind of a breathless pace to a lot of what was going on. And uh, you know that that probably is going to help carry this game and move it past sort of the traditional corridor shooter, which many people would associate with the Wolfenstein franchise. The shooting itself is quite satisfying. I am not an expert with my old eyes on what the frame rate was, but it was very smooth, and I would assume it's close, if not at like 60 frames a second. Um, it was just that sense of just kind of swooping around, locking on, getting a bead. It really is that kind of core essential satisfaction of cause and effect that is at the heart of any shooter out there. Uh, the weapons, once you get to 1960, the weapons get really satisfying. Uh, they're guns, but they do kind of short burst fire, and there's a real sense of heft, and I really kind of enjoyed swapping them and getting to try out the different ones, and then, you know, hopefully picking up something new that just had that oomph behind it. Now, the areas in which you're fighting, they are trying to get away from the corridor shooter. You tend to find some open areas that have different paths that you can use to sort of hide, and you know, actually there's stealth that's available in this game. Um, but the problem I noticed in many instances is once I had killed everybody, I didn't know how to get out. Uh, you know, it, it doesn't seem to have enough of a system to kind of notice that you're dithering and you're lost and confused and say, hey, go over here. Let's try to advance the game. On the whole, the game performed well. It's still in beta, and so there would be hiccups here and there. I think one of the key things I hope happens is that the transitions from the gameplay to the cutscene aren't as jarring as they came across. Um, for an odd reason, the cutscenes themselves are in letterbox, and going from the full screen, obviously, of first-person gameplay into that was something that my eyes just never really accustomed to, and I had a kind of, it was a sense of shock every time that happened. But at the end of the day, it wasn't enough to know if this game can really sustain itself for what I assume would be a 10 to 12 hour experience, but it was nice to get back and kind of play just a shooter. Uh, you know, and probably not since Crisis 3 of last year have I played a game like that. That wasn't my favorite game of 2013, to be honest. But, uh, you know, there, there is, I think, a place for a story-driven first-person shooter. And Wolfenstein right now looks to be the one coming up the soonest that can fit the bill. There's just one thing that I cannot get out of my head, and this is more of a personal issue. Obviously, it takes place in kind of a cartoonish alternate reality of World War II, but there are elements of the game that just play upon that lurid fascination with Nazi doctors. And it's something that, for time immemorial, has always made me feel a little queasy. Uh, obviously, there were some horrible things that were done by the Nazis in the, uh, under the guise of science. And when you start to turn it more into a pulpy pop cartoon, 
you start to create that gulf from the fantasy and the reality that I think many people need to remember so we never go down such a horrific path of civilization ever again. It's an element of the game I wish wasn't there and it was something that when it did emerge and it actually resulted in something that was fundamentally a Sophie's choice, um, it really kind of sucked the fun out of the game for me. Um, I, I, I'm hoping that the game just gets sillier and sillier as it goes on and you don't have that kind of unpleasant sense that you're exploiting what still for many families, and mine included, is something that's very tough to try to reconcile. Um, but having said that, it's a game that I'm hoping to see more of. I think it needs a little bit of tinkering, but uh, hey, it's a shooter. And though we complain that everything is one, uh, there's actually far fewer of them than you would realize. All right, with that, let's take a moment and thank our sponsor, Gamefly. Gamefly is the largest online video game rental service and offers you a choice from over 8,000 new and classic titles across all consoles and handhelds. Plans start at just $15.95 a month, and members can rent one to four games at a time and keep them for as long as they like. Once you're done playing, just send it back, and Gamefly will send you the next available game on your list. You can support Red3 Games and get a free 30-day trial when you sign up at Gamefly.com slash Red3Games.